This is Winston Churchill. He withdrew from frontline politics 11 years ago. Now Churchill lives the life of a retired English aristocrat. He sits in his garden, writes books, paints and raises pigs. But the war in Eastern Europe interrupts this peaceful existence. The Germans, having entered into an alliance with the USSR, are invading Poland. Their attack by land and by sea is supported by their air force. Poland has difficulty defending itself against Germany's military might, and the Germans begin a devastating blitzkrieg. The only way that Poland might be saved is with the help from its allies, Britain and France, but they are stalling. For several years now, Poland's allies have been pursuing a policy of appeasing Hitler. In 1938, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain signed an agreement with the Germans, Italians and French, effectively allowing Hitler to tear Czechoslovakia to pieces. Churchill was sure last year that the war was unavoidable and felt that it would be better to declare war as soon as possible. Now the Germans have already taken Gdansk and have no plans to stop there. The British government must react in some way. There is a discussion in Britain as to whether or not to support Poland and fight Germany. Of course, few people want war, and many believe that the events in Poland do not affect them directly. However, the majority, like Churchill, want decisive action from their government. Under pressure from public opinion, Chamberlain finally decides to confront Hitler. He sends an ultimatum to Berlin, which demands that Germany withdraw its troops from Poland. Hitler ignores the ultimatum, and the Germans continue their invasion, moving quickly towards Warsaw. Britain finally declares war on Germany. Churchill, as a prominent supporter of the war, is invited to join the War Cabinet and offered the position of First Lord of the Admiralty. But in reality, the Allies are in no hurry to begin active military operations in the sky or on land. On Churchill's first day back on the job, a tragedy occurs. A German submarine mistakenly attacks a British civilian vessel. The Germans are afraid of ruining relations with the US, which has so far remained neutral. So claim that the sinking of the Athenia is a provocation instigated by the new Lord of the Admiralty. Churchill immediately orders a report on naval forces and is horrified by the extent of German power. He begins to prepare the British Navy for war, developing a plan to combat German submarines. But while Churchill is busy with the Navy, the Air Force and the infantry do nothing. On land, what becomes known as the Phony War begins. French troops start the Saar Offensive in the West to force Germany to fight on two fronts, but all Allied actions prove ineffective. Churchill tries to convince the British Parliament to engage in a complete war. But Britain has been appeasing Germany for too long and is not ready to take on Hitler. Many hope that peace is still attainable. It will take another year before a radical change in British policy finally makes Churchill Prime Minister. 